Welcome back to what's new in UVM 1.2 series and today we will cover objections. We'll cover several features <coughs> related to objections. Uh, so one feature we'll cover is set propagate mode. <coughs> Another one is uh, a new function being added and uh, the last one uh, is being able to drop all, obje all objections a little bit easier. Uh, so let me explain kind of uh, this example over here. So high level there's a component uh, UVM component that's inside an agent that's inside the test. Uh, so all the interesting um, things are going to happen basically in the run phase of the, UCOMP of the UVM component in this example. Uh, so first we uh, set the propagate mode and I'll uh, talk about that a little bit later. Uh, we basically raise an objection, display uh, all the root objections from UVM root, then display all objections from this component. Uh, and then we get the objection count and this is one of the new features is now you can do phase uh, dot get objection count so you can get the objection count for a particular object in this case uh, uh, this object from UVM phase previously you had to do uh, phase get objection get objection count so this is a new a new method that makes it a little bit easier uh, and then we we drop the objections and I'll talk about this last part a little bit later so first, let's uh, let's cover set propagate mode. So let's let me give you an example uh, without set propagate mode, and this is just basically standard code uh, that will run similarly in uh, UVM 1.1D. So if we run this code, and I've got UVM objection trace on, so there'll be a little bit more uh, logging detail. Uh, so we see that we've got uh, objection being raised, and this this objection is being added to the component above and it's being added to the component above that so when we display all the objections things kind of look like this uh, where the objection propagates up all the way to the top um, and this the second second display statement is we just display the objections for the current component so there's uh, we just don't display that the higher ups and similarly when things get dropped they also get subtracted uh, up the hierarchy so as you can see, there's a lot of uh, a lot of print statements here, uh, and a lot of code being is being executed. But in our example, we don't actually do anything with the objections in UVM agent or UVM test. So you may have a, a really large hierarchy uh, where you know you're setting, uh, raising, and dropping a lot of objections, but you don't actually need some of the higher level. Um, uh, members objects in the hierarchy to do anything with those objections. Uh, so this is where the set propagate mode came in. So if we set propagate mode to zero, these uh, raising of these objections will not get propagated to higher up components. So if we rerun this, uh, we'll see what's going on. Uh, see what's going on. Uh, uh, see what the new changes are. So as you can see, there's there's a bit less uh, this display statements over here is when we display um, the root objections we don't see anything because the objections didn't propagate uh, and when we dis just display the objection count of, of this component we, we still see one objection so there's a lot less uh, a lot less code that's being executed so this is a setting the propagate mode to zero is actually uh, recommended as a performance boost um, in case you you have a deep hierarchy and where you don't want the, the higher level components to, to get those objections because maybe they don't care about it. Um, okay, so let's cover um, the, third, the third one here, ability to drop objections. Um, so over here this is basically a very simple example where um, I create a new objection and then I just call drop objection and I drop all objections and I get the objection count and of course the obje objection count is zero however um, you know this is this is a good good way to drop all objections like suppose you have some sort of interrupt or some event happened and you just, you simply want to you know get out of the state and drop all objections and you don't care whether objections are 100 or zero you just want to drop all of them so um, so previously you couldn't actually do this because if the objection count was was zero uh, this would throw an error but now you can do that so um, I already ran the code so uh, you know it works but I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate the error that you would get if you ran this in UVM 1.1 uh, D so I'm gonna 
uh, comment out a couple of these uh, methods that don't exist in 1.1D. And I'm going to go ahead and run this in 1.1. And you'll see the error that, that you would get if you try to, to drop all objections when the objection count was zero. Uh, you see you would get this error. Uh, so now in 1.2, you know, that's no longer there. That's been fixed. So now you can use a one-line one line call to drop all objections. So the next thing I want to cover is a new feature uh, that's related to sequencers and sequences called set automatic phase objection. Uh, so in this particular example, uh, we've got a sequencer and then we've got a, a sequence and all the sequence does is, you know, for for 10 microseconds, it, it prints a message uh, every, every microsecond. And then the test over here just uh, creates the sequencer and creates the sequence and then starts the sequence on the sequencer. So um, obviously this, uh, this test requires some objections because it consumes time and we don't want the test to end um, prematurely. So this is one example of how people handle this is, uh, is they raise an objection uh, whether it may be in the body of the sequence or maybe in another method, pre-post method or maybe even outside the sequence. And then after the sequence completes, they would drop that objection. And that's how they control you know, how long the test runs. Um, by the way, another thing to mention um, here is, uh, is the starting phase field inside UVM sequence have, has been changed. It's now uh, been, been kind of protected by get and set methods. So there's a get starting phase method and uh, uh, get and set starting phase methods that kind of make, make this variable a little bit more safe and a little bit more secure. Um, but anyway, so um, I'm going to go ahead and run this example just so you can see the output. Okay, the example ran and you can see this, this sequencer ran for 10 microseconds and then, and, and then it finished. Uh, so the new feature is this uh, set automatic phase objection is now you don't actually have to explicitly say you know starting phase raise objection drop objection you can just simply set um, the uh, automatic phase objection and this automatic phase objection only only works if uh, a starting phase exists right so the starting phase has to be defined either by explicitly setting it or some other um, config DB uh, settings such as you know default um, default sequence for a phase um, things like that so now um, just by setting this and it could be set in the constructor over here or you can set the automatic phase objection you know somewhere else like you know where where you create the sequence so now by having that set to one you know you don't need to explicitly you know raise and drop objections here it'll be taken care of for you so just, just to demonstrate, I'm going to go ahead and run this, and you'll see that the results are, are the same as in the previous run. So this is just a, a, helper, a helper method uh, to make things a little bit easier.